everyone and uh, uh, welcome back to Lifehouse Online. Thanks for taking the time to uh, to check out this video today. Uh, we are starting a new series just simply called uh, In the Midst of All of This. And why? Well, because we are in the midst of all of this and by all this I mean we are in such a, a different time in our world. We are still in the middle of a pandemic, uh, maybe middle, maybe end, we don't know. Um, and so much happening in the world when it comes to um, uh, Black Lives Matter, when it comes to justice and injustice, and, and then all of the uh, feelings and emotions that come with all of this stuff. Um, and so these are the sort of things that we want to tackle in this series. And uh, um, things like fear, things like justice and injustice, things like uh, complaining and kindness and really God's sovereignty through it all are just some of the things I'm going to be talking about throughout this series. So I just ask that you would uh, uh, hang in there, check these out each and every week. I'm going to have something at the end of this video each and every week. Um, something to look higher, something to reach, grow deeper, and something to reach further. A reflection or a question for you to work through. And, and I'm hoping that you're not alone when you're watching this. I'm hoping that uh, either you're with your family, you've invited somebody over, and, uh, and that you can um, share these questions and reflections together. That's kind of the point of, of doing that. And so as we start to gather a little bit together, as we're allowed to and, and obeying all the restrictions, um, be able to share uh, the things that you're learning and going through through this series. Now, today we are talking about simply, I've called it the fear factor. Now, I, I am on location here in Niagara Falls and, and right behind me here is what's known as Screaming Tunnels. Some of you may know what that is. And uh, so when I was a teenager, my buddies and I would come here all the time, uh, usually late at night in the dark, because the, the legend says that, that there's a woman that died in these tunnels. And if you go through them at night, you'll hear the screams. And so of course, you know, you're a teenager and not so smart. And so we would come through here and the real challenge was to walk through slowly. And, uh, and so it was terrifying. It was, it was terrifying, stupid. But yes, terrifying. And so uh, fear is something that every single one of us experiences, right? It's inherent to our humanity. It's not whether you choose to be or not. It's, it's, I don't know if you're one of those people who are like, hey, I'm not afraid of anything. Well, guess what? You will be, okay? It's just something that is true to each and every one of us. I, I, I can't stand snakes partly because they're from the pits of hell, but they're, they're scary. Um, but as well, uh, I, have, I get nervous in heights when I'm, you know, at, at high heights and stuff like that. And so, I mean, that's just a few examples. And, and for you, it could be anything, right? It could be spiders, could be uh, fear of flying. Uh, and one thing I think that is a common to all of us is, is probably a fear of death. And so, as I said earlier, still in uh, the midst of all of this, in the midst of a pandemic, Maybe one of the fears that has come um, to mind, um, has been revealed to you through this time, is the fear of this virus and a fear of what may come of that. And, uh, um, and right, we're in our 15th week now of this, uh, of being locked down in here on Ontario and the state of our world has been caused into some sort of, some kind of a panic or at the very least, some kind of fear. And again, as I say, it might all be new and, and this might be one of those things that God has revealed to you through this time. And he has for me. Uh, see, several weeks ago, probably like three or four weeks ago actually, when a lot of these numbers of these cases of COVID-19 and its spread and were, were still increasing and the death toll was rising, um, I had a day where I didn't feel 100%. And see, that happens normally to me. I don't know if you're anything like me, that if you don't sleep well for a few nights in a row, you, your body starts to tell you that, hey, you haven't slept well for a few nights in a row and, and, and you need to shut it down. You need to get some rest. You need to prioritize that. Well, I had one of those days and, and my whole life has been like that. You could ask my mom, and, and even when I was a kid, that if I didn't sleep well for a few days, boy, my body would tell me. And so that happened about four weeks ago. But something new was present. Something new was revealed to me through that time, is I knew I hadn't slept well. I knew I was feeling this way because I hadn't slept well. But I had this fear, maybe, did I have it? Did I have I contracted COVID-19? And so there was this new fear, right? And so now this new fear is present. And the reason why it's present is because of the COVID-19 and because it's serious. In Ontario, 
there's 36,178 cases to date. 2,700 people have died of this virus. We're told it's flu-like. We're told it's contagious and perhaps even more contagious uh, uh, than the actual flu. And it's spreading all over the world, right? This is a pandemic. It's, uh, it's affecting everywhere. And it's not just the virus that is infected everywhere. It's the talk of the virus that's infected everywhere. Like it is everywhere. You cannot get away from this. You cannot get away from the fact that there's a virus in our world today. It is everywhere. And there's no such thing as a short conversation. I'm finding myself getting involved in long conversations. I don't know about you, but long conversations with complete strangers about this. Yeah, it's just a different time that we're living in, something that we've never ever seen before. And there is so much information out there. There is so much information. So much information out there. And which of it is true? Which of it is false? I mean, how, how, how nowadays can we even tell with so much information out there? As a matter of fact, I know three nurses and each one of them have told me something different, either about the symptoms or about um, the prognosis or even about uh, how COVID-19 actually works. And see, this is why we fear the stats and the exhaustive amount of information would have us to believe, at least learn, lean towards the fact that if I go outside of my house, COVID-19 is gonna kill me. Okay, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I'm trying to say, that we, we are surrounded by this, all encompassed by all of this information, and we're leaning in towards the fact that it's, 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 it's gravely deadly. It's again, if I go outside, I'm going to catch it and something really bad is going to happen. And so we are living in fear and to some degree. And so perhaps maybe in and through this, that you have found that, that it's been re it revealed in your life that you have this newfound fear, this apprehension even to leave the house because a fear is a real feeling that we experience. And that real feeling leads to and determines how we function. So again, maybe we're apprehensive to leave the house. Maybe we're apprehensive to talk to anyone, to be near anyone. And even how we look at people has changed. Masks, no masks, too close, not too close. Fear changes the way we function because we authentically feel it as human beings. And fear is what we feel in this pandemic because we know the facts. Okay, did you catch that? Feel. Fear is what we feel because we know the facts. Several weeks ago, I had a good friend uh, come over. Yeah, he owns his own heating and cooling company. He came over to fix my air conditioner and spent about four hours working at my house and, uh, and got it working and I was so extremely thankful. And at the end of it all, I just said, hey, listen, what do I owe you? And he said, you know what, Todd, don't worry about it. And, uh, and as he was packing up his gear, he turned, walked over to me, shook my hand and, and, and left. And, and uh, I remember later on in the day, it finally hit me that I shook his hand. It hit me like that, that wouldn't have hit me six months ago, right? You shake somebody's hand, whether they, you know them well or whether they're a stranger, it's just kind of this natural reaction. But now because of the fear from the facts, this feeling did he have the virus and I shook his hand? Wait a minute, did, did I have the virus and, and did I give it to him? Now there's this new, again, new found fear being revealed through this time. Now in the plethora or plethora of all the available information that is uh, at our, um, right at our fingertips right now, I happen to check out the Niagara Region website, Niagara Region Public Health website. And on this website, it gives you all of the stats of the place where, well, where I live and maybe most of you who are watching this where most of you live. And I found out that there were zero cases of COVID-19 in Fort Erie. As a matter of fact, I heard that uh, and read that there's only been seven over the 15 weeks. And then as a matter of fact, there's only 30 active cases out of the whole Niagara region, 450,000 people. And as a matter of fact, on this website, uh, the Niagara region says that 80% of the people who have COVID-19 experience what they call mild symptoms. Now, these were facts I didn't know. These were facts I didn't know. And you would think that knowing these facts would change my feeling, but it didn't. 
and maybe it doesn't to you either. Maybe you've come across the same facts and, and you're still finding the same level of feeling of fear or apprehension in you, that discomfort. Why is that? It's because of faith. Now, I, I realize that that sounds odd, but hear me out. What we're doing is we're putting our faith in two words. What if? We're putting our faith in those two words. What if? See, the, the, they're present because of faith, and it does sound odd. We fear despite knowing the facts because we have put our faith in those two words. Sure, there have only been seven cases in Fort Erie, but what if somebody from outside of Fort Erie comes that has COVID-19? What if somebody from Toronto or, or heaven, heaven forbid, the United States? And, and, and sure, 80% of people experience mild symptoms, but what if I'm a part of that 20%? What if, what if, what if? What if? The reason the facts don't determine our feeling now is because we have put uh, our faith in the what if and it is that that is determining how we're functioning. The reason why the facts, those facts that I read from the Niagara Region website, don't determine my feeling is because I've put my faith in a what if and that is determining how I function. That's determining my apprehension and my discomfort. So we're left with a huge, huge question that we have to answer. What will it take for that to change? What will it take for that to change? Well, the answer is, is simple and it might be confusing at first, but the answer is faith. The answer is faith. See, the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 4, that I sought the Lord, David said, and he answered me and he rescued me from all my fears. He rescued me from all of my fears. Now, that doesn't mean that you will never, ever, ever experience fear. Many times, David says that the Lord rescued me from the pit. He says that because he was in a pit. And so God came and rescued him out of that. So we will experience fear, but God will rescue us from all of our fears fears in so that we don't have to remain in fear and so that fear does not determine the way we function and the way we act. Isaiah 41 verses 1 to 10 says this, Be silent before me coasts and islands and let people renew their strength. Let them approach, let them testify and let them come together for the trial. Who has stirred up someone from the east? In righteousness he calls him to serve. The Lord hands nations over to him and he subdues kings. He makes them like dust with his sword and like wind-driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them, going on safely, hardly touching the path with his feet. Who has performed and done this, calling the generations from the beginning? I am the Lord, and the first and the last, I am he. The coasts and islands see and are afraid. The whole earth trembles. They approach and arrive. Each one helps the other and says to the other, take courage. The craftsman encourages the metal worker and the one who flattens with the hammer encourages the one who strikes the anvil, saying of the soldering, it is good. He fastens it with nails so that it will not fall over. But you, you Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, I brought you from the ends of the earth and called you from its farthest corners. And I said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you, I haven't rejected you. Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God and I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah is writing to those in exile. They've been taken captivity by a, a foreign army, the nation of Babylon. Um, listen, we'll come in and we'll take them. He's writing this prophetically. So he's writing this saying, listen, you're gonna be in a space at one point in time where you don't wanna be. You're gonna be taken captive and you're gonna be in a land that's going to feel, well, I guess for our sake, like a pandemic. You're gonna be on lockdown. You're gonna be in a situation you don't want to be in. And as a matter of fact, you might fear, feel because of fear that if you leave your house, you're going to be killed. That's pretty much what, what he's saying. And I can only imagine that this is how the way they're, they're going to be living. 
but then God speaks into this. These are God's words speaking into his people. And the two words that would be guiding our lives are the what if, and that can change the way we feel and function. There are two words from this text that we need to change and put our faith in. And those two words are not what if, but those two words are I am. I am. Like, listen to what God says. Bef be silent before me, coasts and islands. He silences not only people, not only nations, not only armies, but he silences creation. He silences islands and coasts, the oceans and the land, the birds, everything is under God's command and God's rule. Who has stirred up someone from the east? God is doing the work through another army that's coming from the east in the Persian army. He says the Lord hands nations over to him, to him and he subdue, subdues kings and he makes them like dust with his sword, like wind-driven stubble with his bow. Who has performed and done this? Calling the generations from the beginning, I am the Lord, he says, the first and the last. And because he is the I am, and because he says two more words, I will, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. See, we gotta put our faith, not in the what if, but in the I am. He is the great I am and he is with you and he is your God. Oh, and I could imagine they would have been asking these questions in exile, in cap captivity. Like if we're your people, how long is this going to last? How long are we gonna be in captivity? How long are we gonna live in a foreign land having to obey by their rules? Hey, how about us, God? How about, how long will this pandemic go? How long are we going to be locked down? How long are we going to have to adhere to all these restrictions? And the truth is, the answer is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The I am has got it under control. And as a matter of fact, if we had all the answers to those questions, well, we wouldn't need faith, would we? If we had all those answers. So what will it take for those fears to change? Faith is the answer. The fact, the fact is God is in control and his word tells us who he is and what he is capable of. Those are the facts. And in order for those facts to change how we feel and how we function, those facts need to be in, uh, ignited by faith. Those facts need to be ignited by faith. Faith is a confidence in the presence and the goodness and the purposes of God. See, that is at the heart of the matter. Do we have faith and do we have a confidence in his presence? Do we have a confidence in his goodness and do we have a confidence in knowing the purposes of God through creation and through his redemptive work in our lives and in the world? Faith is evident. It shows in each and every one of our lives of where we put our faith. It's displayed in how we function. Right? So if we know the facts and we ignite it by faith, we believe those facts, it changes, it has to change how we feel and therefore has to change how we function. So if we really believe God is who he says he is, that he is the great I am and that he will help us and there's no reason to be afraid, then faith is displayed in our lives as a freedom from fear, as a freedom from anxiety and worry and that we would take, uh, take simply the serious call of Christ and to, to not worry about our lives, it says in Matthew chapter 6. And we have learned that we will not live in anxiety, but rather in a peace that transcend, transcends all understanding, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4. We've learned to cast all our cares, and we continue to learn to cast all of our cares on God, knowing that he cares for us, knowing that he is the I am, that he is our God. And now listen, it's not only faith. I think faith naturally leads to two things. When we believe wholeheartedly and learn to believe wholeheartedly, faith leads to two things. And the first is hope. So just as faith is the antidote of fear, even hope cancels our despair and any propensity that we have to cynicism. Hope is crucial in a world marked by profound suffering and what seems like unending disappointment. 
To live in hope is to believe and to act in the conviction that though evil is strong, that it does not have the last word. And therefore, as Christians, hopelessness is not irrational. It's not merely just another form of wishful thinking. It is not just mere optimism and looking on the brighter side of life. No, it's something so much deeper and that the, the genius of Christian hope is that it comes in the midst of a deep awareness of the reality in which we live and in the places that we work and that we know and we are not naive to the powers of darkness and the powers that exist in this world. Our feelings reveal our faith. Our feelings reveal our faith. How we function reveals our feelings. Where we are angry or in fear, where uh, discouragement or we're mourning, wherever those things have entered our hearts, they're revealed in how, we, in how we feel and then how we act. These movements of the heart, see, they're not, they're not evil, they're not wrong, and they may be the appropriate responses to what's happening in our world. In the midst of it all, the appropriate response would be fear, maybe injustice, maybe anger, maybe loss, maybe experience the, the wrongdoing of something, uh, no matter where we're at. And so what we need to do, friends, is we need to nurture faith and hope. We need to nurture a delight that is a deep joy in that which reflects the goodness and providential care of God. He is the I am that says I will in both creation and in his redemptive purposes in the world. What he has done, he will do. What he has done, he will do. We are inundated right now with information, as I said, about the coronavirus. We're inundated. Again, it's everywhere. And as a new article comes out, we're, we're, we're prone to say, hey, did you hear this? Oh, 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 but did you hear about this that's coming? Hey, do you know it, and, and, and have you heard? But if we would inundate ourselves with who God is and saturate ourselves in his word, knowing who he is, then we would be prone to say, did you know or did you not know? Have you not heard? that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. See, when we're inundated with the word of God and knowing who he is, that changes our feeling and that changes how we function. Living by hope and living by faith requires that we believe something fundamental about the goodness of God. That indeed evil is for but a season, but evil will not have the last word and that God will triumph. He will, he will triumph. His word says so. Take heart, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. And so therefore we're left with the crucial question, aren't we? Do you believe it? Do you really believe this? And will we rest in this conviction? Will we function in a way that reflects a confidence that this is true? In other words, will we have faith? Will we have faith? And how do we know? So I, as I said earlier, faith produces two things. And the first is hope. The second is joy. And initially I thought that the opposite of faith would be peace. But the more I think of it, the opposite of faith, of, sorry, the opposite of fear, I thought it was peace. I don't think so. I, I think the opposite of fear is, is joy. I think the opposite of fear is joy. And joy is the pinnacle and the outcome of a cultivated, cultivated faith and hope that is nurtured in knowing God and walking with Jesus. I'll leave you with these verses from 1 Peter chapter 1. You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffered grief in various trials or through a pandemic, so that in the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which though perishable, is refined by fire, it may result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him, Though you have not seen him now, you believe in him and you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So friends, where have you put your faith? Where have you put your faith? In the facts, they'll reveal your feeling and how you function. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.